In this lesson, we want to review solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula. So in our last lesson, we reviewed how to solve any quadratic equation by completing the square. Now, most students hate this method because it's just so tedious. So fortunately for us, there's an easier method known as the quadratic formula. So this basically allows us to take any quadratic equation, which is written in standard form, and just plug in the values for a, the coefficient of x squared, b, the coefficient of x to the first power, and c, the constant, and immediately obtain a solution. So first and foremost, the quadratic formula is derived from taking this ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and essentially just solving it for x by completing the square. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that process, just so you know where this is coming from. And then from here on out, we can just use the quadratic formula. It's very, very easy. So the first thing I wanna do if I was completing the square on this, forget about the fact that you have no numbers involved other than zero. You have a that's the coefficient of x squared. We wanna make sure this is a one. So to ensure that, we're just gonna divide each side of the equation by a. So that's kind of your first step. So we know that this cancels with this, and we would have that x squared plus b over a times x plus c over a is equal to zero. Now the next thing is to make sure that all the variable terms are on one side and all the numbers are on the other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract c over a away from each side of the equation, and that's gonna give me that x squared plus b over a times x is equal to negative c over a. All right, so now I'm at the step where I wanna complete the square. So essentially I wanna transform the left side into a perfect square trinomial. So I wanna take the coefficient of x to the first power, which in this case is b over a, and I wanna cut it in half. So that means I wanna multiply it by a half, and then I wanna square the result. So this just becomes b over 2a, that amount squared, so this becomes b squared over 2 squared is 4, and then a squared is just a squared. Okay, so we're going to add this right here to both sides of the equation. So let me erase all this. We're going to have that x squared plus b over a times x plus b squared over 4a squared is equal to negative c over a again, plus this quantity. So plus your b squared over 4a squared. All right, so let's factor the left side as x plus, remember we squared b to get b squared, so this is b over. We squared 2a to get 4a squared, so 2a, and this whole thing is squared, and this equals, if I get a common denominator going over here, I would need to multiply this negative c over a by 4a over 4a, okay? So that would give me b squared minus 4ac over the common denominator of 4a squared, okay? So now I can use my square root property and I can take the square root of this side and then plus or minus the square root of this side. So let's get some room going. So that would give me x plus b over 2a is equal to plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. If I take the square root of 4a squared, I just get 2a. Okay, so that's gonna be my denominator. So if I wanna solve for x, all I've gotta do is subtract b over 2a away from each side of the equation. And notice how you have a common denominator here. So I can say that x is equal to, I'm just gonna put the negative b out in front then plus or minus my square root of b squared minus 4ac. This is gonna be over the common denominator of 2a. So this is the quadratic formula. This is what we can use to solve any quadratic equation. So if it's in the format of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, I just record the values for a, b, and c, and I plug them in. So I'm gonna plug in here for b and here for b. I'm gonna plug in here for A and here for A, and I'm gonna plug in here for C. Okay, so that's all I've gotta do. So let me erase this, and we'll take this down to the next page, and we'll see an example. So let me paste our quadratic formula here. 
So this is what we're going to use to get our solution. So the very first thing you need to do is you need to make sure this is in standard form. It's not in standard form because you have 14x squared over here and 10x squared over here. You want ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. So let's move this down for one second. So I'm just going to subtract 10x squared away from each side of the equation. And this would cancel give me zero. So essentially what I'd have is 14x squared minus 10x squared is 4x squared and then minus 5x, and then plus 1 equals 0. All right, so let me erase this. All I need to do, I don't need to do anything fancy with this equation. I just need to record the values for a, b, and c. So a is the coefficient of x squared. So a here is going to be 4. b is the coefficient for x to the first power. So here that's negative 5. And c here is my constant term. In this case, this is 1. I want to caution you against something. You need to make sure this is in this format before you record the values, okay? If your equation is all jambled up, like it is here, you're not going to get the right answer, okay? So make sure you put it in standard form first before you start this process. So now that I have the values for a, b, and c, I can just plug into my quadratic formula and I'll have my solution. So x equals, you've got negative b. b is negative 5, so the negative of negative 5 is 5 then plus or minus the square root of b squared. Negative 5 squared is 25. Then minus 4 times. For a, we have 4. And then for c, we have 1. Then this is over. 2 times a, a is 4 in this case. So 2 times 4 would give me 8. So now I just simplify this and I have my answers. So x equals 5 plus or minus. 25 minus, basically 4 times 4 times 1 is 16. So 25 minus 16 is 9, so you'd have 5 plus or minus the square root of 9. We know the square root of 9 is 3, so just go ahead and write that as 3. And then this is over 8. So we can go ahead and say that we have x is equal to 5 plus 3 is 8, so you'd have 8 over 8, which is 1. And then 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 over 8 is 1 fourth, so you'd have 1 fourth there as well. Okay. So just make sure you break that up and do both solutions especially in this case, because you want to say you have 5 plus 3 over 8. So that's one solution for x, and this leads to 8 over 8, which is going to give us 1. Okay, so that's how we got this guy right here. Then the other scenario is 5 minus 3 over 8. So that gives us 2 over 8, which is 1 fourth. So that's how we got this guy right here. So x basically is going to be equal to 1 or 1 fourth. Okay, and look how much quicker that was versus completing the square or even if we were to use factoring. Okay, using the quadratic formula is generally the fastest method. All right, for the next one, we're going to look at negative 5 minus 2x equals negative x squared. Again, I always want it in the format of ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So I'm going to add x squared to both sides of the equation. And I get x squared minus 2x minus 5 is equal to 0. So now all I need to do is record the values for a, b, and c and plug into the quadratic formula. That's all I need to do. So for a here, it's the coefficient of x squared. It's just going to be 1. So a is 1. b is what? It's the coefficient for x, so it's a negative 2. And c is going to be a negative 5, right? It's the constant. Okay, so let's erase this, and let's just kind of drag this up a little bit. And in case you forgot the quadratic formula, you can just keep writing it. You'll remember it pretty quickly. So it's x is equal to, you've got negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I'm going to plug in for b. I've got a negative 2. So I'd have the negative of negative 2, which is plus 2. So x equals, you'll have 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared You'd have negative 2 squared, which is 4, then minus 4 times a times c. a is 1, c is negative 5. So you'd have negative 4 times 1, which is negative 4, then times negative 5, which is positive 20. So we'll put plus 20 here. Let's get some room going. Then I have it over 2a. a is 1, so this is just all over 2. So this is just all over 2. So x is equal to, you've got 2 plus or minus. 4 plus 20 is 24. So the square root of 24 which we know we could simplify into what? Square root of 24 is the square root of 4, which is 2, times the square root of 6. 
So this is 2 times square root of 6, and then over 2. Now, you could leave it like this, but you want to always simplify if you can. You want to think about the fact that you have a 2 here, a 2 here, and a 2 here. So really what I could say is x is equal to, factor out the 2 from the numerator, you would have 1 plus or minus the square root of 6 over 2. This guy would cancel with this guy, and we would have that x is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 6. And again, this is two different solutions. This is x equals 1 plus the square root of 6, and also x equals 1 minus the square root of 6. All right, let's look at another one. So we have 7 minus 5x is equal to, we've got negative 4x minus 3x squared. So again, clean this up, put it in standard form. You want your ax squared plus your bx plus your c is equal to 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 3x squared to both sides of the equation. And I'm going to add 4x to each side of the equation. And that's going to give me what? These cancel. This is 0 on the right. So I would have 3x squared. And then 4x minus 5x is negative x. And then you'll have your plus 7. Okay, so this is equal to 0. So now all I need to do is record my values for a, b, and c. And I'm basically set, right? So a here is going to be 3. a here is 3. b here is negative 1. Okay, b here is negative 1. And c here is going to be 7. So I plug into my quadratic formula. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Just keep writing it, and it's going to become second nature for you. You'll remember it in your sleep. So I'm going to go ahead and say that x is equal to the negative of b. b here is negative 1, so the negative of negative 1 is 1, plus or minus the square root of, again, b is negative 1, so b squared is 1. So you'll have 1 minus 4 times a. a is 3 here, so 4 times 3 is 12, times c. c is 7, and 12 times 7 is 84. So you'd have 1 minus 84 which is negative 83, and this is all over, 2 times a, a in this case is 3, so 2 times 3 is 6. All right, so let me erase all this, and we'll kind of look at these two different solutions here and see what we can do. So we know we would have x equals 1 plus the square root of negative 83 over 6, and then x equals 1 minus the square root of negative 83 over 6. What I can do to simplify here is say that x is equal to 1 plus or minus Pull out the negative part and say this is i times the square root of 83 over 6. All right, let's talk a little bit about the discriminant. So the discriminant is basically the b squared minus 4ac. It's the part of the quadratic formula that's underneath the square root symbol. So essentially, by looking at the discriminant, we can get a lot of information. We'll know the type of solution we're going to get, whether it's real or imaginary, and we'll also know the number of solutions we're going to get. So in the case where b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, we're going to have two real solutions. Now, if this guy right here happens to be a perfect square, then you're going to get two rational solutions. Now, if b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, then you're going to get exactly one rational solution. And the reason for that is, the plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, if this guy is 0, you have plus or minus 0, which is just 0. Okay, So it kind of renders the plus or minus part ineffective. So if b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, then you're just going to have one rational solution. So then the last kind of case is that b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. So in this case, you're going to have two complex solutions. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have 10x squared plus x plus 1 equals 2x. I just want to subtract 2x away from each side of the equation just to put this in standard form. So I'm going to have 10x squared. x minus 2x is negative x, and then plus 1 equals 0. So again, I want to record my values for a, which is 10 in this case, b, which is negative 1, and c, which is positive 1. So let's think about the quadratic formula. So x equals... You've got negative b. In this case, b is negative 1. So the negative of negative 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is negative 1 squared, minus 4 times a, a is 10, times c, c in this case is 1. Okay, now this guy is going to be over 
2 times a. So 2 times, in this case, a is 10. Now, what is this part right here? Again, the discriminant. This will predict the number of solutions and the type of solutions we're going to have. So negative 1 squared is 1. And then minus 4 times 10 is 40 times 1 is still 40. So you'd have 1 minus 40, which is negative 39. So if this is negative 39, I know that I'm going to have two complex solutions. Okay, so let's go through this. The negative of negative 1 is just 1. And then if I think about plus or minus the square root of negative 39, 39 is 13 times 3. So there's nothing I can really do other than to pull this negative out. So I can put this as I i times square root of 39, and then 2 times 10 is just 20. So essentially, you can leave your solution in this format. This is perfectly fine. Or you could write that x is equal to 1 plus i times square root of 39 over 20, and then also x is equal to 1 minus i times square root of 39 over 20. All right, let's look at one more. So we have 8x squared minus 4 is equal to negative 8x plus 12x squared. So again, clean this up, put it in the format of ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So I'm just going to subtract 12x squared away from each side of the equation. And I'm going to add 8x to both sides of the equation. So this is going to cancel and become 0. I'm going to have that 8x squared minus 12x squared, which is negative 4x squared. And then we have plus 8x, and then minus 4 is equal to 0. A little trick to make this simpler Whenever you work with stuff and you see that this is divisible by 4, this is divisible by 4, this is divisible by 4, and 0 is divisible by 4, I can just divide both sides of the equation by 4 and make this easier. I can also divide both sides of the equation by negative 4 if I want. It does not change the solution. Okay, It just makes it easier to work with. So this becomes x squared, this becomes negative 2x, this becomes plus 1, and this equals 0. Notice how I'm going to be working with smaller values for a, b, and c. It's just something you can do very quickly to make your life a lot easier. So let's go ahead and erase all this. Let's drag this up. And again, let's record the values for a, which in this case is a 1, for b, which in this case is negative 2, and for c, which in this case is 1. So we get x is equal to negative b, in this case b is negative 2, so the negative of negative 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So you're going to have negative 2 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 1. Okay, this is all over. 2 times a, a is 1. So 2 times 1. Okay, so let's think about our discriminant and predict our solutions. So we have negative 2 squared, which is 4. Okay, and then we're going to subtract away 4 times 1 times 1, which is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. So this is going to be taking the square root of 0, which is 0. So since the discriminant is 0, I know I'm going to have one rational solution. right? Because you can basically get rid of this part here. And you can say that the negative of negative 2 is 2. And 2 over 2 would just be 1. So x here would just be 1. Okay, That would be your only solution. 